Hi everybody, we're taking a quick little break from the 911 project car to work on the turbo today. It's been a couple of years and this car is due for a brake flush. I'll run you through some of the tools and supplies we'll need. The first one here is our Motive Power Bleeder. This is gonna allow us to pressurize the entire brake system and it's what enables us to do the entire job by ourselves, very cool. These are some catch cans to catch the fluid as they come out of the brake cylinders and another little one I'm gonna to use to, to empty the reservoir when we start off. This back here is just some detailing uh, spray. You wanna make sure that your areas are very, very clean. The brake system really cannot deal with contaminants at all, so we're gonna clean everything carefully before we work. This is our replacement brake fluid. Now you wanna be super certain that you have the right brake fluid. There's a couple of different types, dot three, dot four, dot five, and they're not really intermingleable. So you wanna be careful about that. Another thing to look at is on the back here, it will give you a temperature specification for this. And this one happens to be, it's actually pretty high. So it's a, it's a dry boiling point, a 265C, and then a cold of 165C. And the reason that's important is that if you're gonna race your car, you wanna make sure you have the right brake fluid in it so it doesn't boil when the brakes get super hot. Cause if it does, you'll your brakes. So that's another important specification on your brake fluid. All right, well, continuing over here, we've got some protective gear here. We've got our safety glasses and gloves, a couple of different funnels, whatever we'll need, clean up rags and such. We're gonna use this guy here to pull the fluid out of our reservoir when we get started. A little bit of anti-seize. And then the rest of this is just to get our wheels on and off uh, for our car. It's a 19 millimeter wrench, an extension, this to get it off. And then we're gonna use a torque wrench to get it back on. On our car, the actual brake bleeders are an 11 millimeter and you're gonna want a closed end wrench. You don't really wanna use the open part of it because you can, this, those things are a little bit soft and you can kind of strip them. So you really wanna always try and use the closed end. All right, well that's pretty much the tools. So let's go ahead and take a look at the car and see what we're into there. Another great thing to do before you get started is to check the pressure on your brake pedal. So the car is not running right now and you just wanna kinda feel what, you, what it is before you start. So it feels pretty hard to me. It's actually, it's actually got a really good pressure on it and that means you don't have any air in your system. So you want it to be at least this hard or better when you're completely done with your service. First thing we'll wanna do is break loose all of the wheel bolts on all four wheels. Much easier to do when the car is on the ground. I have this really cool telescoping ratchet that I use for this sort of thing. Kind of doubles as a, as a breaker bar for me. It can get quite long or be actually pretty short and get into tight spaces. Really kind of a neat tool. The nice thing about it though is that it ratchets. So when you have to put in your wheel bolt lock thing, you know, it only goes in one way. Way, right when you put it in you can spin this guy around until it locks in there we go we'll go ahead and break all of these loose in a star pattern that's all the wheel bolts loose we're ready for the next step our next step is going to be to get the old fluid out of the reservoir I've got my safety glasses on because this fluids kind of weird also I've got a nice towel sitting over the painted surface here brake fluid will just eat paint like nobody's business. So you wanna be very careful, keep it off your paint. If you do ever get a drop on it, you wanna make sure you have a cloth with you and you can always wipe it up really quickly. I've already cleaned this entire area. You wanna make sure it's super duper clean as well. Pull off your cap. Now inside these reservoirs, uh, most of them are gonna have a filter cup in here. So you wanna take a look at that and just make sure it's clean. If it's dirty at all, go ahead and clean it out. So our next step's gonna be to get our fluid out. Now you can use a turkey baser or something like that, works great as well. We had a very sick kitty, it was very sad. And we have some paraphernalia left over from working with that kitty. So it's actually to hydrate the kitty, believe it or not. But it's a kind of a nice plunger here that we can use to pull the fluid out of the reservoir. Now, in Interestingly, it looks like this 
this particular reservoir has a bit of a float in it, which is gonna make getting our plunger in there kind of difficult. Now there's these slots on the side, and I think I can use a little bit of tubing and just sort of work it in there and get it to the bottom of the reservoir, and I think that's gonna work great. Now one thing we wanna be certain of is not to remove all of the fluid in there. The last thing we wanna do is expose the bottom of this reservoir to air, because we don't want air in the system. I'd rather leave a little fluid in the system and then just push that through with all the other fluid than have the possibility of getting air in the system. So let me go ahead and stick our little tube in here. You can see our fluid level dropping. That's awesome. Now you wanna also take a look at that color. That's going to be important. It's probably gonna be a little bit darker than the new fluid that you throw in there. Now we're just gonna continue with this until we've removed enough fluid out. Once again, we don't wanna remove all of the fluid. Last thing we want is air in the system. Okay. I think that gives us a good start. I'm going, I can't really see super well into the bottom, so I'm gonna stay on the air on the side of caution here. And I can sort of see the fluid moving around inside the vessel still, so I feel pretty good with that. Doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up at this point with brand new fluid and pressurize the system. Now we're opening our fluid here for the first time and it still has its little pull tab on the top, so we know that this is a completely sealed container. Now this, this particular reservoir with that thing in there, with that like little valvey guy in there, makes it a little bit hard to get fluid in and out of. I've wrapped a towel around my bottle here just in case it dribbles down. And I have this here as well. I know this seems like overkill, but this stuff is, is kind of rough on paint. So there we go. And you can see that's pretty full at this point, great. Put the, cut, the cap back on our fluid. Next, we're gonna attach our motive bleeder here. There's two ways to do this. We can either put the fluid in the bleeder or we can put the fluid in the reservoir and just pressurize it. The reason I'm putting the fluid in the reservoir and not in the bleeder is because I'd use this for other purposes. And also, you know, this, this pump on this thing has grease in it and it, it kind of can contaminate any of the fluid that's in there. There is, there's a little blotch of grease down at the bottom of this reservoir. Also be very difficult to get this thing clean when you're done. Brake systems really require everything to be squeaky clean. So for this case, I think what I'm gonna do is just watch my reservoir very carefully so I don't have any air going through and I'm going to just pressurize it with the bleeder and not add fluid to the bleeder itself. Now they make a better version of this, kind of the cheapy version of it where this is an articulating cap and that does make this getting, getting this thing on a lot easier. But it basically just screws onto the top here until you feel like you have a good seal. We're going to pump up our bleeder. Now we wanna to go to about 20 PSI, not much higher than that. There we go. Okay, 20 PSI, we can lock this off. Now it's important, we wanna watch this gauge. If this gauge drops significantly, we either have a problem with our bleeder or we have a leak in our brake system. So I'm going to set this aside and let this remain pressurized. We're gonna go back and jack up the car and remove the wheel that's farthest away from this reservoir. So you always start with the one that's the furthest away. So that's going to be on this car, the right rear. I've got chalks on the other side on both wheels. Keep it in, it's in gear and it's got the brake on. I just don't want the car moving with the wheel, when the, we've got the wheel off the ground. No need to go crazy, we only need it high enough just to clear the bottom of the wheel here. Now the wheels on this particular car are ginormous and we have these ceramic brakes. You have to be very, very careful not to bang the bell of the wheel on your brake rotor because if you chip it, it's very, very expensive to replace. So Porsche has these wonderful little um, little tools that you, that you screw in once you pull the lug nut out and they're just alignment, pull, um, little alignment rods here that allow you to pull the wheel straight out. So this is a little bit of a daunting process just because you know how much money you got in the balance here. So just be careful pulling these things off. You can stick your foot underneath, whatever you need to do to pull this off carefully. So we just work off our little rubber protective cap here. It can be a little bit difficult to get off sometimes. There we go. 
that's off. Now on this car, it's an 11 millimeter in order to loosen this up. So as soon as we do, remember we're still under pressure. So as soon as you do, stuff's gonna come out and we don't want any of that fluid on the paint of the brake calipers either because it'll eat that as well. So we've got our rag at the ready here. I'm going to hook up my little tube here. I'm gonna put my wrench on first. Here we go. Now we can hang our little catch can here just so it's off the ground and doesn't fall over. Now before we start, of course, we did make a point of pumping this thing up to 20 PSI. Let's go back really quick like a bunny before we start and see what we're at. Well, it did go down a little bit, but I looked at the reservoir and looked at the fluid level in the reservoir and it really hasn't changed. So I think it's fine. Actually, I think this thing just actually lost a little pressure. All right, back to the rear right wheel. We're all set to begin our bleeding. Next step is going to be to loosen up our bleed teat here and be careful with it. They can be a little tight. There we go. We see the fluid coming through a little slowly. Now if your fluid's coming through too slowly, you can use a little more pressure. At this point, let me go ahead and pump up to about 25 PSI and see if we can get a little better flow. I pumped up to 25 PSI and we can see our fluids flowing through. Since this is the furthest one from the reservoir, we're going to pull out the most fluid out of this one. The lines are the longest. So we'll probably want to get at least halfway up on this. This is 500 milliliters. The other thing we want to do is keep a close eye on the reservoir and make sure it doesn't go dry while we're doing this. So through this process, make sure that your fluid level doesn't drop too much below that min mark at all. You want to be very careful of that as you're draining fluid out. I believe this is a dual chamber reservoir. So so when the fluid level gets down towards the bottom there, make sure you look at the lower of the two levels. At this point, I want to refill the reservoir. So I want to close this off first. We just don't want any air backing up into the system when I depressurize it. So that's off. We're still hooked up with our catch can. Let's go back and put a little more fluid in the reservoir. I'm going to loosen the top of this to release the pressure slowly. There we go. We can take our cap off. Put our bleeder cap back on here and repump back up to 25 and continue. All right, so we crack our bleeder loose again. Now, one thing you want to take a look at is the fluid color itself. You're really looking for a change in color in the tube. It's going to be really hard to tell. So I think I'm just going to pull about two thirds of this, which should be enough to completely flush this entire circuit. Maybe a half to two thirds, something like that. We'll go a little bit more. I do see a color change right where my thumb is, but I just can't be sure. I'm thinking probably right about here-ish. Another thing we're looking for is any air in the lines themselves. If you see any air bubbles at all, and I'm seeing actually, look at this. There are a few little air bubbles here in the line that we're getting out. See, you can just kind of see them coming out. That's a good thing. We want to make sure that we get all the air out of the system. If you notice a continuous stream of tiny little bubbles coming out in your tube, there's a good chance it's probably just air leaking around the little bleed nipple. And if that's the case, it's really not a big problem. But go back and double check when you're completely finished that your brake pedal is good and solid. Well, I feel we've pulled enough fluid out for this one. I'm going to go ahead and and tighten this back up again. We can remove our tube. Be careful with this stuff because it kind of goes everywhere. There we go. Let it drain back in to the vessel there. Great. And we remember to put our cap back on. Now, the, the, since I said this is a dual piston setup here, calipers, there's one in the back. Since we've pulled the majority of fluid already from the whole system through this one, the only bit that's really here on the back is just a short tube that really goes down in here. So we don't have to pull much fluid out of that, but we do need to drain it. Now we're still pressurized and we've checked. We've got plenty of fluid in the reservoir. We're all set. Go ahead and open this up. And there's our fluid coming out. Okay, well, we don't need to pull much out of this, just enough. There we go, we'll go ahead and tighten this back up again. Now, a note about these things, you really wanna choke up on your wrench quite a bit. They shouldn't be too awfully tight at all. They can strip pretty easily, so be careful with them. Go ahead and pull our little rubber tube off. 
Remember to put your little rubber teat back on. All right. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. All right, well that's pretty much it. The rest is just putting the wheel back on. I've got my wheels all nice and clean. Nice little added bonus to this process that you can clean your wheels. So these are our summer tires. So we swapped out our winter tires with our summers. And I went ahead and ceramic coated these as well. I think that's really gonna help. The uh, ceramic brakes here don't put out a lot of brake dust, but it certainly makes the wheels a zillion times easier to keep clean. All right, let's go ahead and refit this wheel back on. It's always an adventure. You do have these posts, of course, which really, really help. But And this isn't all that heavy, but it's just as huge. This thing's monstrous. It's a 295. It's a pretty darn wide wheel. Also a good opportunity to check your tire as well and tire wear. These wheel, these tires are pretty pretty new for us and the wear bars are quite a bit below the surface, which is great, but this car has a nasty tendency to eat tires. So get it fairly aligned. Grab one of those posts, mm -hmm. spin it around until I can get the other one, and then you just sort of slide it on. There you go. One thing I like to do with my wheel bolts, just so they don't get corroded, is just the tiniest little kiss of Never Seize. And I'm talking just a little bit, so I just rub a teeny bit right here on the end of the threads. Not much more than that, just a teeny bit. And that'll help keep the bolts from getting themselves uh, corrosion welded in, makes it a lot easier to get on. It will slightly affect the torque level that you put on those bolts, but I've never had a problem with that. All right, well, we just go around diagonally and we go ahead and replace all of our wheel bolts. this point we're all done go ahead and just lower the car down remove our piece of wood that we used here this little safety guy all right that's that there we go with our wheel down the last thing we need to do here before we're all finished is to go ahead and torque our wheels since down on the ground we can do that i've got a nice torque wrench here now i always store these things at 10 foot pounds because uh that's what the manufacturer said to do but the actual torque on these is about 90 foot pounds so i'll go ahead and rotate my wrench it's here we've got the little zero and the little 90 next to it so that's 90 foot pounds and we just want to cinch them down first make sure everything is just close to where it needs to be there we go so if they're all pretty close we're using a star pattern here so about torquing really quick you want to push through it you don't want to sort of inch up on it and kind of eh, 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 eh. you want to push through until you definitely hear the click here we go there's your click With our wheel torqued, we're pretty much all done with this wheel. The rest of the car is pretty much the same. We're gonna stay the furthest away from that reservoir by doing the rear left, then the front right, and then the front left in that order. When you get completely done, go ahead and refill your reservoir back up. Make sure it's up to the max level on your reservoir, and then get in and push on that brake pedal. It should be solid, should be hard as a rock, really. Should be at least as good as it was when you tested it initially. If it's not, if it feels a little bit mushy and soft and kind of weird, then you've probably got some air in the system when you did it. And if that's the case, you're gonna have to repeat the process because it'll be hard to tell which wheel you actually got air in on. That would be a problem. So do not drive the car unless you're super happy with that brake pedal. If you still can't get it, then you might need a little outside help. Normally this process can be done in about an hour or so by a single person. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. And as always, a super special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Okay, well, until next time, safe travels. Bye.